Looking at infection management uh, for sinus graft surgery, what I'd like to share with you are three main topics uh, this afternoon. First, we're going to look at postoperative early uh, infections, meaning a time frame of three days to two months. And that's somewhat of an arbitrary time frame, but I've picked the two months as an upper number uh, because basically we have to put a line somewhere, and it seems like most of the problems we're going to see in terms of infection fall within this time frame. Late postoperative we'll talk uh, about and more or less look at later than two months. And finally, last but not least, we'll look at risk factors, which I think is so important and pertinent to uh, this discussion uh, for sure. Now, let me preface my discussion by telling you that uh, the uh, approach I use most all the time and have for the past 25 years, 26 years now actually, is a lateral uh, approach. I do some crestal cases, but not many. Uh, so it's the lateral approach that I'm, I'm looking at, but what I'm about to share with you really pertains to even a, a crestal approach uh, as well, and in some cases, uh, actually more so. We know these cases are predictable. In fact, 98 plus percent of the time, our graphs do quite well. Um, 90, maybe 96 to 97 percent of the time. Whether we're doing two stage, or one stage, without question. Uh, predictability is there. Uh, it's almost like anesthesia. Most all the time, our general anesthetic cases go extremely well, but it's that small percent of time when the proverbial hits the fan that we need to know what to do and how to do it. And that's really where I'm coming from with this, uh, this presentation. Uh, from an experience perspective, um, yes, I've done quite a few graphs over the years. And I think um, that as a result, I've not seen everything, I'm sure, because every time I think that, uh, Murphy's Law kicks in quite well, and uh, you know what that's all about. But I have seen a wide spectrum of scenarios uh, over the 26 plus years of sinus grafting, and I will tell you that yes, we have a rate that's about almost 3% of graft failures. Now infections, I categorize it about 6%. That includes small pustules, suture abscesses, things like that. But full-blown infections where we lose our graft hovers in the high 2.8 to 3%. Now, what is normal sinus graft healing? Let's start right there and have a baseline. Typically, typically, we're seeing our patients at one week. And I like to say, uh, see them at, at seven days for one main reason, and that is most of our infections, most of them in the early phase, we'll see seven to 10 days out. You don't want to see them two weeks or longer. In my opinion, that's not a, a wise thing to do. So at seven days, typically, we're going to see um, some swelling, some ecchymosis, et cetera. I will then see them, and some related symptoms we'll talk about in just a bit. I'll then see them at the second week, typically suture removal time, if not, if I haven't done it, at week one, and then roughly at the four-week level or time frame, and then uh, follow up thereafter. So typically, some swelling, some ecchymosis, mild to moderate discomfort, an occasional nosebleed, um, nothing really uh, to write home about, so to speak. Uh, again, the vast majority of the time, these folks do quite well. Uneventful healing, uh, quote unquote. Again, at the second week, I'll see them, and at, at the uh, four week time frame. And then not until, uh, if we place implants, then we'll typically wait uh, a three to four month time frame, et cetera. That's normal post-op sequelae. Now, with regard to complications specifically addressing infections, because I have a whole, I can talk all day literally on all the complications that we can see with sinus grafts, uh, from uh, early uh, post-op to late post-op to intraoperative issues as well.